a very good morning to one and all we are dis- today we are discussing about another topic that is deviated nasal septum or dns it is also an uh, abnormality which is comes under uh, nose nose disorder so it is anatomic ab- abnormality we will discuss in later first of all uh, we will start with the introduction nasal septum is a part of the nose that separate the two airways and the nostrils a deviated septum is when there is a shift from the midline or center position so when you are going through the anatomy and physiology of the nose you can see in that the both side of the uh, nose is separated by a septum a bony cartilage is there so that we can call it as nasal septum and it will separate the two airways and the nostrils okay, you can see in that between the two opening of the nose between that there is in the middle there is a uh, bony cartilage portion is there that is called nasal septum a deviated nasal septum uh, is when there is a shift from the midline or center position and you can see in that uh, and, uh, for everybody that uh, uh, cartilage or the board, the septum will be in the center midline it will be in a straight line so if there is any change in the uh, line of this septum if it is right or left uh, if away from the center portion that we can call it as deviated nasal septum it is a common physical disorder of the nose involving a displacement of the nasal septum to one side if it is displaced or if it is position that position is changed to any other side that we can call it as nasal deviated nasal septum it is an important cause of nasal obstruction so this is one of the main cause of nasal obstruction we, yesterday we discussed about nasal and uh, laryngeal obstruction that first cause is dns so that is a deviated nasal septum so it is one of the cause for major cause for nasal obstruction let us see the definition Nas- nasal septum deviation or deviated nasal septum is a physical disorder of the nose involving a displacement or deflection of the nasal septum so in the uh, beginning i told that it is a anatomical uh, deformity uh, is the anatomy or structural deformity of the nose so it is uh, a physical disorder physical means is related with anatomical or structural of the nose involving a displacement changing the position or deflection okay or any abnormal uh, shape of the nasal septum that we can call it as deviated nasal septum some degree of displacement is common okay in uh, people you can see that if you are observing uh, each other you can see some kind of uh, small deviations are there that is common affecting 80 percent of people unknowingly okay sometimes it can occur unknowingly okay so the, here you can see the uh, nasal passage and the deviated nasal septum. normal septum will be straight line the dotted line is a normal septum and the uh, the side c shape like that is coming that is a deviated septum let us see the instance dns can involve any age and sex okay there is no gender or any uh, age discriminatory males are affected more than females 80 percent of all nasal septum are off center or generally not noticed so 80 percent are not noticed because maybe it can there is some displacement will be there but it is not too much there is no chance of any nasal obstruction so it is not noticed let us see the causes or etiology trauma trauma is one of the main cause blowing or on nose then developmental developmental means congenital it can uh, occur by growth okay during the uh, fetal time in the mother's womb uh, during the development time because of any external trauma or any pressure changes in the uterus there is a chance of uh, this deformity then unequal growth skull base and palate okay so if any uh, deformity in the uh, head that can also lead to uh, deviated nasal septum if any compression is occurring on the head region that time it can occur mass in opposite nasal cavity if any growth is taking place in the opposite nose okay inside the opposite nose means no uh, nostril okay uh, then na- racial factor okay mainly you can see in europeans then hereditary is also there posterior dns can be occurring as a hereditary let us see the types it includes anterior dislocation then c-shaped deformity then s-shaped deformity sparse and thickening so in the first one there is a little uh, uh, mistake is a dislocation okay uh, that c is cut there so anterior dislocation c-shaped deformity s-shaped deformity sparse s-p-u-r-s and thickening so these are the four types of uh, dns or de- deviated nasal septum we will discuss one by one first one anterior or caudal dislocation septal cartilage may be dislocated into one of the nasal chamber 
so in the picture you can see that is a uh, exit uh, you can see in that the septal uh, cartilage may dislocated to one or one of the nasal gem it will completely dislocated to one of the nasal gem that we can call as anterior or caudal dislocation c shaped means septum is deviated in a simple curve to one side okay one curve like uh, deviation you can see nasal chamber in the concave side of the nasal septum will be wider and may show compensatory hypertrophy of the turbinate so one side you can see it is a wider and the other side it is very congested okay then s shaped septum may show a s shaped curve either in vertical or anterior posterior plane okay vertical straight you can see or anterior posterior uh, s shaped uh, deviation you can see and causes bilateral nasal obstruction because it is both side the s shape means both side involvement will be there so bilateral uh, 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 nasal congestion will occur then nasal septal or spur a spur is a shelf like projection often found at the junction of bone and cartilage and cause headache and epistasis so in that the red color you can see that that is a exactly spur the sharpened uh, edge of the nose you can see so it's a uh, shelf like projection okay so a, a shelf like projection will be there or a sharpened curvature you can see and uh, uh, junction of the, at the junction of the bone cartilage and causes headache and epistasis next a thickened and impacted nasal septum so in that the nasal septum is getting uh, thickened or it is getting impacted or it is getting obstructed it may be due to organized hematoma or overriding of dislocated septal fragments so mainly this impacted uh, nasal septum or thickened nasal septum is occurring after the fracture or some day, uh, sometimes because of some trauma there is an uh, uh, is organized hematoma is occurring okay blood clot is occurring inside Uh, the cartilage and this can dislocate the septal fragments okay so these are the four main types of uh, deviated nasal septum let us see the signs and symptoms main signs and symptoms are nasal obstruction headache will be there then sinusitis epistasis nose bleeding then external deformity while seeing the appearance will, there will be deformity you can see then middle ear infection also will be there so once the sinus is getting blocked or nose is getting blocked there's a chance of uh, spreading of uh, infection or uh, some fluid collection will be occurring in the ear so these are the possible clinical manifestation let us see the diagnostic evaluation mainly history collection we have to take the proper history of any uh, childhood or a uh, congenital anomalies any birth injuries then any hereditary factors okay then any recent infections or any trauma any surgeries okay then physical examination mainly nose examination we have to do then x ray we can take it will helps to identify the uh, exact location of the uh, deviated nasal septum then rhinoscopy then nasal endoscopy ct scan and mri scan these are the diagnostic evaluation which will helps to Uh, identify the exact location extension of the disease and also the uh, size of the obstruction let us see the uh, another diagnosis that is cotillus test okay cotillus test it is used in nasal obstruction due to abnormality of nasal wall the cheek is drawn laterally while the patient breathes quietly okay so uh, if they are having any Uh, deviated nasal septum then uh, we the, we have to tell them to take a breath uh, when they are breathing that time we can uh, uh, see that if normally the both uh, both side of the cheek will be moving uh, equally if the nasal airway improves on the test side the test is positive indicates abnormality of the vestibular component of the nasal way if one side of the uh, cheek is moving and the other side is not uh moving then that means it is a uh, positive uh, indication for a nasal uh, obstruction or uh, nasal septum deformity so that is called cotillus test now see we are we are going to discuss about the management how we can manage the condition so we have seen that this, uh, there is some obstruction will be there though we have to provide decongestion it will helps to relieve from the congestion then antihistamines it will helps to relieve any allergy if this can also occur due to any allergic reaction so it will be subside then anti inflammatory and analgesics help to relieve the inflammation and also uh, pain will be there headache and sinusitis pain will be there that we can treat then monitor vital signs because uh, 
sometimes because of this uh, deviated nasal septum there is a chance of increasing uh, pressure inside the blood pressure inside the nose can lead to epistasis then stop nose bleeding if any nose bleeding is there means that we have to manage semi foulage position should be given so it will help for ease breathing then avoid aspirin because if we are giving aspirin it can lead to uh, a chance of high risk for bleeding then ice application uh, it will helps to reduce ice uh, pain and swelling so these are the main management for or uh, pharmacological and non pharmacological management for deviated nasal septum let us see the uh, what is the other management so minor deviation with no symptoms require no treatment so uh, we have seen that 80 percentage of cases are asymptomatic uh, people are having uh, mild deviations so that is uh, common in nature so there is no need of any treatment treatment when deviated septum produce nasal obstruction an operation is indicated when uh, th this septal uh, deviation is uh, indicating some kind of nasal obstruction that a person can able to take breath properly then sinusitis will be there so much uh, discomfort will be there so that time we have to go for the uh, surgery the surgery is including submucous resection and septoplasty so these are the two surgeries which we are uh, doing in uh, deviated nasal septum we will discuss uh, each one first one submucous resection generally done in adults under local anesthesia this is a surgery which we are doing uh, under uh, local anesthesia and mainly we are doing in adults consists of elevating the mucoperichondrial and mucoperiosteal flaps on either side of the septal framework by a single incision made on one side of the septum so you just go through the anatomy and physiology to identify the terminologies mucoperichondrial and mucoperiosteal okay mucoperichondrial is, uh, is associated with the skin and mucoperiosteal uh, is uh, the skin which is attached to the uh, cartilage so then what we we can do uh, we, uh, then uh, a single incision is made on one side of the septum. One side of the septum, we have to make an incision. Then removing the deflected part of the bony and cartilaginous septum. Then we have to remove the deflected or the obstructed part of the or the deviated part of the bony cartilage we are removing. And cartilaginous septum also we are removing and then repositioning the flap. Okay. Then after removing the projected or deviated uh, septum that uh, through the incision we are removing, then we are fixing the uh, flaps okay this is we are doing in submucous resection so here you can see in that bone removed and uh, removed as necessary that uh, that uh, brown color that part we are removing then uh, we are fixing or repositioning then septoplasty it is a conservative approach to septal surgery as much of septal framework is retained only the most deviated parts are removed and rest are corrected and repositioned. So septoplasty, it is uh, simply we can call it as uh, septal repair. In this one, it is a conservative approach. Conservative means we are not removing too much areas of the or we are preserving the area. The repairing with preserving the uh, anatomic and physiological uh, area or uh, functioning of the nose. So here it is a conservative approach to septal surgery as much of the septal framework is retained uh, that septal structures will be or the anatomical structures will be remaining there but the most deviated uh, parts are removing the rest are corrected and repositioned so the entire septum will not be removing we are keeping the septum the most deviated or if it is too much deviated that area only we are removing remaining area we are correcting and repositioned Indications are deviated nasal septum causing nasal obstruction and recurrent headache. If the person is having nasal congestion and if they are having recurrent headaches, that time we are going for septoplasty. Then deviated nasal septum causing obstruction to ventilation of paranasal sinus and middle ear resulting in recurrent infection. So there is a connection between ear and uh, septum to, uh, sorry, nose. Uh, it is the uh, maintaining of the air pressure. So if there is any disturbance in maintaining of the ear air pressure and also if the sinus is not clearing properly or drainaging properly due to the obstruction that time we are going for this septoplasty another thing is recurrent epistasis from septal spur so due to septal spur if any recurrent epistasis is occurring then septorhinoplasty when you are doing the shaping the uh, uh, rhinoplasty we are uh, shaping the nose so that time we are doing this septoplasty then as an approach to 
surgeries of sphenoidal sinus and pituitary gland so when you are approaching to the pituitary gland surgery or sphenoidal uh, sinus surgery that time also we are doing this septoplasty so these are the uh, indications for septoplasty understood so here you can see in that septoplasty deviated cartilage straightened so that uh, blue line is a deviated so that is straightened then cartilage and bone removed then uh, that uh, fixation is done okay then complications are recurrent sinusitis will be there, middle ear infection will be there, mouth breathing, asthma, trauma and aspiration. So these are the possible complications for uh, deviated nasal septum. Sinus, recurrent sinusitis will occur, middle ear infection because the air pressure is not maintaining in the ear. Then mouth breathing because of the nasal obstruction, mouth breathing will be there. Person can, uh, uh, there is a chance of attacking asthma. Then trauma, okay, uh, because of this one, uh, deviated nasal septum, there's a chance of trauma inside the nose. Then aspiration also. Let us see the post-operative nursing management. Antibiotic and analgesic administration for 5 to 8 days after the surgery. If the person is undergoing surgery, then we have to continue 5 to 8 days of antibiotic and analgesic administration. Removal of nasal pack after 48 hours. If the bleeding is uh, stopped, then we can remove it after 2 days. After removing nasal bag, use decongestants in order to prevent the uh, congestion. Then apply ointment, Vaseline or liquid paraffin in the nose to loosen the crust and clots. So uh, after the surgery, there is a chance of crust formation or clot formation that we can loosen with the help of ointments, Vaseline or liquid paraffin. Advice to prevent injuries to the nose for three weeks and the patient, uh, patient must take a one week rest. Forcible nasal blowing must be avoided. So we have to advise them to avoid for forcible nasal uh, blowing and also uh, prevent them from injuries for at least three weeks. In the nasal packaging, uh, maintenance of the position can be done to control bleeding and to prevent hematoma formation. So we have to provide internasal packaging and uh, position also we have to maintain then so that we can prevent the chances of bleeding or a hematoma formation. If the client has undergoing rhinoplasty, should be applied with small dressing. Then if they are undergone rhinoplasty only, uh, nose repair, then we can uh, provide a small dressing. Post-operative care is directed at airway management, control of edema and hemorrhage, pain, pain reduction, then client education and emotional support. So in this area, we have to give more, uh, 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 more care and uh, we have to give more attention so that the person will recover uh, as early as possible. So this is all about the topic, uh, deviated nasal septum. So it is a, uh, a disorder which comes under anatomical or structural deformity, which comes under nose uh, disorder in the ENT. So it is very important for your exam. So please go through the topic. Uh, so to, uh, today we discuss about what you mean by deviated nasal septum and what are the causes behind that one and what are the types we have discussed about four types and uh, how what, how we can uh, identify or uh, what are the signs and symptoms then how we can diagnose this. then we uh, see the medical management in that pharmacological non-pharmacological management and also uh, two surgical management we have seen then what are the nursing management after the surgery and also we have seen the complications so this is all about today's topic uh, if you, I uh, hope you understand about today's topic. If you have any doubt, you can feel to contact me. Have a nice day.